Then of course there were, okay, of course there were uh, banana leaf. You know, bananas were a big thing. There was a man who used to just cut a whole stalk of the whole tree, right? Whoosh! And he'll come out and he'll take that and put that over his shoulder and dress it in some crocus sack, throw on a mask, and then he would take the flower and just throw all over his face. Because back in the day, people didn't want you to see who they were. You know, everybody wanted to be in this guise. And so they had plants like thatch, croton, or anything which you could have break off, right? And you would tie it on or do whatever, and you would come to Bay Street like that, okay? And um, what's amazing was we started out pasting with the newspaper. And then when after the Queen, we started using tissue paper. Tissue was a little, little softer than the crepe, all right? So we started pacing with the, with the tissue paper. Now the thing about the tissue paper and us lighting drums, because you know we have to create a fire to heat our drums and all that, right? And a lot of people would get caught with fire because the, the, the tissue was, I mean, just flammable, just the one little spark at that, it just whoop. So on Bay Street, now at Jonkaloo Town, all kind of people are on fire, and so the dock was right there, so you just run over by the dock and jump over for it. Okay? So we said, all right, um, England had, had produced some crepe paper that was non-flammable. It could burn, but it, it didn't create a fire. And so we, we, we shifted from tissue to, to crepe, all right? And of course, the crepe is a little bit more colorful, a little bit more pretty. And then as the costumes, uh, progressed over the years and we started pasting, we've gone, gone away from the long French, gone away from the newspaper, gone away from the sponge, gone away from the plants and the crotons, gone away from the banana tree and all them kind of things, we've gone away from all of those things and now we, we get sophisticated now and we, we, we started to go into themed costumes, all right? So you will have a theme, um, going back to England again, there was a Scott Highlanders <laughs> and then there was the bee feeders, and then there was the royal choir boys, and I mean all of these British kind of influences in our costume, and because you know that was available to to us, we actually didn't go into any creativity at that point because uh, we were using that methodology, and it was in 1977 when. The French became very, 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 very small that you could almost could hardly see it. All right, and um, the music makers I know for sure was this group that started this real nice pasting with paper, right? And it, it was so nice that the Prime Minister of the late Sir Lyndon Pinlin, right, when he saw when he saw the the costumes, he said, oh, these guys are painting with paper. And that's how unique this whole thing came about. We started the, the, the very, 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 very short French. And so we came from very small costumes to costumes of great proportions. I mean, you could almost fill this room with one hour lead pieces. And so as, as the costumes and the, the designs and the themes, uh, they all became very intricate. And of course, the designs became very dazzling and of course very colorful. And what significantly has changed with us is that I remember when we first started, we were a group of 39 members. That's a very, very small group. 89. And uh, we, we have this military style of, of parading. It was almost like the police band, you know, almost like, like, like uh, uh, military. So everybody is right there on one another, very, very straight lines. All the costume spaces are faces alike, right? All the colors coordinated. So when you see one, you see all, right? And that, that, that was unique. So. We needed one more 
to make 40 to make the line even because there was one missing from the line and that's, that's basically how you it is. Now, groups have gone from 40 to 400. I'm talking about big, big groups, people coming from, from, from everywhere. Now we started in Mason's edition just over the hill yards. We walked straight over Elizabeth, over the 66 ste steps, Fortin Castle, right down the hill, that's us. So we are, we are, we are city boys. I was born in the city, because I was born at the base of Market Street Hill. So you refer to us as city boys. Most of the people who participated back in Junkanoo uh, back in the time came from the city. Because here is, here is Bay Street, and we are just over the hill. And then most of the groups actually came right out of the community just over the hill. And so that was, that was very, very unique. And um, what was amazing was groups before us, well, they weren't groups before us. They were, they were, they were called gangs, all right? What, what gang you rushing for, you know? Now, gang today, right? When you say gang today, it's a kind of a dirty word. But they had gangs back then. But they were, they were, they were good gangs. And I, 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 I'm hoping now that in this whole evolutionary process, right, that we can have some good gangs of results of, uh, of us being over the hill, we became very territorial. You know, only certain people could be involved with this because this is where we are from. But now all that has changed now. So now people are rushing, they're coming from all over the island. They're coming from all over the Bahamas to want to be like an Agu, they want to be a part of the Saxons. And so that was also a very significant change. Now, there were so many groups which made the whole thing, whole parade very, very exciting. Way more groups than we have today. But because of the, the Valley Boys being so, uh, so powerful, right, they reminded me of the Romans. And all the Romans did was they was just conquering here and conquering there and eventually they became an empire, right? And so because of, of the Saxons and the Valley dominating the parades, most of the small groups, they became disappointed, they became disillusioned, they became despondent and also disgusted <laughs> because they just could not keep up with the ongoing onslaught. You know, and so as a result, you only had the Valley and the Saxons at one point. Andre, I don't know if you can remember that, um, was predominant. So most of the, the 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 big groups became extinct, particularly the groups from the Old East. Now you know what's amazing. From from Nassau Street, which is the base of the hill, at the base of the hill, from Nassau Street, all these streets that go up. All the main street that go up, they go over, that's why they call it over the hill. Follow me? And over the hill goes all the way to Camp Road. Because even when you go on Camp Road, you have to go over the hill. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So, it, over the hill actually meant something as it related to Chompano, because everybody over the hill basically was so close to Bay Street they became associated to it and with it, you see? But now you don't have that much of that anymore as we did in the past. Pasting was done with flour and water. You get the regular flour in the flour bag and you get some regular water and you mix that up and that's what you paste with, all right? Anybody have a piece of flour? Piece of flour. Okay, good. Now, with the flour, with the flour, after you have already pasted your pants or your shirt or whatever the design was, what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll hang it in the ceiling. And uh, we'll prepare that one long before the parade. And that would hang in the ceiling. You put it in the ceiling because, well, you want it to be on everybody, we get to know. Chancunu wasn't well liked uh, in the society like it is today, right? 
But what we discovered that when it was almost time to take it down, it was full of cockroaches. <laughs> and of course, nibbled by mice. Of course, you know, most of the houses, the houses didn't have any ceilings, so, you know, you're just hanging on the end of the rafter. So we got a few say, boy, what are we going to do with these, with these roaches? So what we did was we added some, we added some insecticide to the flower and the water. And I didn't know it too good. So we say now, how are we going to get this now? Also what happened was when you perspire, as you know, with the heat from all the movement and all that, your, your clothes get so soaking wet that eventually all the paper will drop off. <laughs> so by morning, you look like a muddy, uh, <laughs> a muddy rat, <laughs> you know. And so we say, man, we got to find a way to make sure that this paper stay on. So what we started to do was we started to boil the flour. So we got the big tin tubs, got the big bags of flour. Because of course now you're facing for the whole group now, right? Small groups, 40, 50. So we'll mix that as we go along, we'll mix that flour and that water. And we'll throw some kerosene oil in that. We'll throw some aloes in that. Aloes, we call it aloes. And we, we, we throw other ingredients, insecticide and everything, mix it up, say, you know, right, you need this. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no roach can be in this. But eventually, we changed to Elmer's white glue. You know? We even tried to, to paste with Niagara starch. But of course that didn't work too well. But it was a little sticky, but it wasn't sticky enough. And then we went on to, on to white glue. We used to call that the flower pack. Okay? And um, that was just so amazing, just having to go through that era of... I mean, I used to be full of flour. <laughs> Times I get home, man, all everywhere full of flour, you know? But that was done basically to keep away the bugs. And so then the white the white glue came in to play. And then um, we started building our costumes out of chicken wire. You know what chicken wire is? Mm -hmm. Anybody know what chicken wire is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we'll do, we'll have a form, a form from wire, right? And then we'll cover it with chicken wire, all right, to get the shape. So you're doing a bird, for example. So you build the bird body and all that. You form it with the regular wire and then you cover it with chicken wire to, to sort of give you your, your filling. And then you will take old newspaper and you will soak it with flour and water. Soak, I'm talking about, I'm talking about soaking wet, right? Mm -hmm. And then you will take that soaking wet newspaper and you will slap that onto your chicken wire, right? And so what we were doing, paper machine. Mm -hmm. So paper machine really became a integral part of the costume making. And then that took so long. <laughs> right? I mean to get one costume done just took so long. Mm -hmm. And so we went in and just forming the wire. I remember the year we came as a crawfish. Favorite band and seafood was our theme. That was that was the late sixties. And we just formed the wire. And then we took old sheets, right? Old flower bags and all that and as we coated we coated that, we actually sew on, sew on the cloth onto the wire. And that was a means, also a means of trying to cover for, to paste on. But of course, that took so long. <laughs> and then my brother, Dr. Emmanuel Francis, I had introduced him to Jumpanoo in the early 60s. <laughs> the mid 60s, I had introduced him to Jumpanoo. And he said, I have, a, I have a methodology that we could use. And he said, we're not going to fool with that wire anymore. And so we went strictly cardboard. Mm -hmm. And all our costumes went strictly cardboard. The thing about cardboard, we still use cardboard today. Mm -hmm. So cardboard is, is the base, the, the, the raw material, the base for, for, for making these costumes. Of course, you know, styrofoam and all that began to creep in. People began to do carbon and all that kind of thing. And anything that is accepted by the judges um, is also helps in the evolution. So these lovely faces, there was a face that came out with Milo Butler one year out of Star of Home. And it really was captivating. And so the judges gave that particular piece for his prize. So 
Anytime you do that, they know you know there's an acceptance. And so evolution comes with acceptance, with you accept certain things. And you know it's amazing. John Canoe was led by tall men, uh, big men. That, that was your that was your lead piece. Like I know Frankie knows Meg on. He was a real big guy. And so and he was also a tin smith. Right? He used to do air conditioning, so he was well, so he made his costumes out of tin. Mm. Alright. Now you know only him when he read that was kind of size he was. And so tall men were were actually the aspect in the front of a group. Okay? And then you'll have maybe three or four other fellas with you. Now, tall men now has, has come into 20 foot lead costumes. <laughs> so, you don't have the, the big men anymore now. So, you have these real huge lead pieces. Of course, with our influence by visiting carnivals around the world, you know, they say what they say about us, you know, we see stuff, we see stuff and then we, you know, we try it too, you know, and that's what happened. So, as a result, the costumes came into play. Now, the, we used to make rose buds. If I didn't have such a long day, day I'd have been able to bring more stuff with me. But we used to make rose buds, right, from the fringe. So what we'll do is we'll take the paper and we'll roll the paper on our fingers like this, right? And then you'll, 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 you'll fold it, you'll have, a, it's about that long. Then you'll clip off, clip off the back, right? And then you'll put the paste on that. And so you make what we call a rose butt. So the fringe will be on one side. And so if you wanted to have put in a design after you've pasted and you want to put a design in, we used to call it rose butt. Mm -hmm. You roll it on your finger, roll it, it looks just like a rose. And you know, you stick it on if you want buttons, you roll it on your finger, boom, boom, boom. Now today, we using all kinds of stuff, man. All kinds of things. Glitter. <laughs> glitter streaks. We started with glitter streaks. We started uh, streaking with black paper just to get definition from the various colors. Sequins and beads and rhinestones and braids and ornaments. Prism. And I remember one year, I had one feather on my head. One. And we were saying, boy, this, this could be against the law, you know, you're supposed to be wearing no feathers. <laughs> but I had the one feather. We started from one feather. Today, we have thousands of feathers, mm -hmm. right, on Bay Street. And I can tell you the truth, those feathers are very expensive. When you see all of those ostrich and, 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 and fe uh, uh, what you call pheasants and all that, they're expensive. So one particular piece of costume, could really, really, really be costly. 